You guys remember as trainers when you first started to make the connection that most chronic pain was connected to weakness and instability versus like something wrong. Mm. More often than not, uh, when somebody is complaining of chronic pain, it's due to weakness and instability in that surrounding joint. When you've been doing this long enough, you've seen this. And it's, it's so common in clients where they have an issue like that, that if you actually focus on it, address it, work it, like you use your example of the, like the ankle stuff. Like if someone has really poor you know, and weak feet and ankles and limited uh, range of motion on one side. And if you actually address mobility in there, you will see improvement in that chronic pain all the way up their body. Here's an easy, general, simple step you can take in your training to alleviate chronic pain. Train unilaterally. Just train one limb at a time for about two months. And that tends to solve a lot of pain problems. That's, yeah, a, you, that's a really good tip, but you need to explain that a little bit more. Yeah, I want to get into it, uh, but I'll tell you first why that is the way I opened the show today. So uh, obviously Map Symmetry now has been out for, let's see, when did we release that? About four, three months ago? It's been about like three that, months? yeah. So, so June, I think. So the oh. initial people that signed up for it during the launch now are going through it, right? So they've been through at least half of it is what we're, what we're seeing. Mm. And I'm getting a lot of messages from people who followed Map Symmetry, and the number one comment I'm getting is it took care of the pain that I had. Oh, I used to have this back pain, I had this hip pain, knee pain, and it's totally gone now um, after following the program. And MAP Symmetry is not a correctional exercise per se program, but it's a, a lot of unilateral training. And it just, you know, it just highlights how effective training one side of your body is at a time at kind of solving these, I don't well, know. It helps you to focus on uh, where you're unstable. Yes. Uh, a lot. And so it's like, you don't realize that because we're creatures of habit and what we've developed in terms of these patterns of lifting. Um, a lot of times you can mask a lot of those imbalances by momentum or by, you know, if you're doing a lot of bilateral exercises specifically, you can use uh, your body in ways where you can, you can basically bypass a lot of those issues that are underlying. So it really helps to kind of uh, bring that to the surface. Totally. I mean, if let's say you do bar, you do a lot of barbell exercise, which are phenomenal, but let's say one side of your body is 3% different than the other in terms of muscle recruitment pattern, which meaning, is very common, very common, right? 3% is nothing, by the way, I'm, I'm using a very conservative number, but just 3% different. So it's either 3% weaker or 3% less stable, or the recruitment pattern is different, but you always train this way over the years. That means that some joints are going to be stressed differently than others, and it can cause problems. And what happens is you strengthen that difference. That 3% becomes solidified because you consistently train it that way. What you train is what you strengthen. And it doesn't become something that's visible or you, that you can target until you really start training one at a time. That's when things start to happen. And then you strengthen in that direction and things tend to balance well, out. Well, too, and when you, when you keep doing bilateral type of lifting, um, you're going to be loading uh, a lot more than you would uh, unilaterally. And so it's it, it's like you're putting more stress and demand on mm -hmm. your body to what's underlying uh, and not uh, being addressed. And so it's like you just try to kind of muscle through it. And a lot of times, you know, especially athletes are guilty of uh, trying to kind of uh, self-correct as you're, as you're just pushing through. Uh, when in fact, uh, being able to take that time away from uh, really intensifying your workouts and adding more load, uh, it does your body so much better. Yeah, totally. You guys remember as trainers, when you first started to make the connection that most chronic pain was connected to weakness and instability versus like something wrong. And mm -hmm. I remember as a young trainer, like, you know, clients telling you that they had chronic pain and everything like that and not really knowing where to, where to, where to address it. Or the best thing that I think I knew what to do back then was like, Oh, I'll try and strengthen the muscles yeah. that are near that area. Should probably stretch things out. Yeah. So. Or stretch yeah. potentially yep. like thinking it's that way when in reality, more often than not, uh, when somebody is complaining of chronic pain, it's due to weakness and instability in that surrounding joint. Yep. Yeah. Or even just distal joints. Right. Cause yep. like if my ankle is, uh, if my left ankle is, ha has some mobility or some strength issues, I might be so good at compensating that my ankle itself doesn't feel bad, but then the areas knee. that compensate. Then your knee hurts. Knee or the hip, right? Yeah. Or even, there's even been, I've even seen it go all the way up the kinetic chain to like the shoulder. Yeah. You know, I, I had a physical therapist that I worked with for a long time, not personally, but she, she worked in my studio and she was amazing. She was excellent. Her name was Lori. And she, I remember one time she had a client who had uh, like kind of neck pain, neck tightness. 
And eventually she was like, oh, it's coming from his left, uh, I think it was his left foot or something like that. And I remember being like, what? That's ridiculous. I mean, this is back when I was kind of more of a bro trainer. Yeah. And she showed me and then she trained it and it went away. And I remember being like, well, I guess everything's connected. It kind of makes sense. I know. I used to be so mystified by that. Like you get some issue with like the left ankle and then your right shoulder would be messed up. Well, it, it, the contralateral kind of it connection. It ping pongs. There. It ping pongs all the way up the kinetic chain. Yeah. So it's like if if the, you have a, a weak a weak joint over on, on this side, like you have weakness and instability on this side, then the, the next joint up is got issues. Then the next joint up has issues. Keep and pushing next, it further up. Yeah, and then it keeps going all the way up. Up and um, I remember f figuring that out, and then that was like a, a tactic w I would use with clients, like trying to convince them to personal train with me early on because it would blow their mind. It would blow their mind that mm -hmm. you could, they'd have maybe some, like you said, like upper back or shoulder issue. But it's and, not that. Yeah, it's not that. You could work it all the way down, and then you find out they're like, oh, I actually yeah. broke my ankle like three years ago. You think that has to do with all that? And I said, yeah, well, because then you're compensating on this side, mm -hmm. then that side overcompensates, and then that side overcompensates, and then it works its way all the way up, and all that stuff hurts. Oh, and, yeah, totally. Like, like uh, um, if you put like a quarter inch rise in one shoe, or even yeah. less, something that's uh, kind of barely perceptible. And then walk around like that all day. I guarantee your back will start to bother you, and I guarantee if you stick to it long enough, your neck will start to bother. That's you. like it reminds me of. I didn't mean Seinfeld even covered this, but like uh, when George had the huge wallet. <laughs> Look at this thing! It's, it's huge. <laughs> He's sitting on it constantly. It's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, it's it's just like those hips are just constantly in that. Uh, sort of asymmetry all day long and it just destroys your yeah, back, yeah. right? Like stupid stuff like that. It affects you if it's like a continual thing. What is yeah. it with the dad wallet, by the way? I know. <laughs> that is such a dad wallet Dude, thing. Dude, yeah. you keep yeah. all the receipts. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it is. The coupons he's, he, he's and everything. Keeping, he's keeping all the receipts from everything, you know? I do. I'm still the notorious like for this. like a brick in his back pocket. Yeah, that or like business cards, right? Someone hands me a business <laughs> card. Oh, God, I got to keep that. You never know. I might need that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five years later, it's this big. You know, might like, call the guy sometime. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I got a DM from uh, a woman who was a powerlifter, competitive. So she's not a beginner, not even intermediate. She's been competing. I think her DM said like three years or something like that. And she was in, I bought map symmetry because I've been powerlifting so long. Obviously, powerlifting is all bilateral, you know, barbell type movement. And she was strong. I don't remember what her lifts were, but she listed them and she was really good. She says, I followed map symmetry. I went back to powerlifting. She's like, I can't believe how much less pain I feel. And now I'm awesome. seeing my, I'm starting to break my old PRs because of, you know, correcting these, uh, these, you know, issues. This, this conversation flies in the face too of, of the, the other side, right. That likes to debate the whole mo mobility side and yeah. train that way. This is the part that annoys me. It's like, when you've been doing this long enough, you've seen this and it's, it's so common in clients where they have an issue like that, that if you actually focus on it, address it, work, like you use your example of the, like the ankle stuff. Like if someone has really poor, you know, and weak feet and ankles and limited uh, range of motion on one side. And if you actually address mobility in there, you will see improvement in that chronic pain all the way up their body. Or you could just fall in the other camp and just as like, oh, that's such a waste of time to to do mobility exercises. You should just strength your train your way through it. It's just like so silly to me that that's even an argument no, still and, in our space. And I know where it comes from. It comes well, from the fact that general strength improvements will improve mobility generally, right? Mm -hmm. But when you come down to an individual with chronic pain like that, especially somebody that's been working out for a while, you got to yeah, be this more isn't coming from This isn't coming from dumb trainers. This no. is coming from intelligent people yep. that will try and, and try and use uh, studies to prove their point that you don't need that. Well, I think the only point saying. that they have that's valid with that is if it's not being applied as as strength driven mobility, right? Yeah. So mobility is supposed to be about strengthening and supporting around and creating that stability. It's not about flexibility or anything passive. So if, if you're utilizing, uh, you know, any kind of like stretching technique where we're more passive in that, then it doesn't apply as well. No, uh, having lots of flexibility with little strength is actually some of the most unstable that you can ever be. I've, and it's not common, but I've worked with clients who had hypermobility or super flexible, like Gumby, no strength. Yeah. They were the most challenging clients to not hurt. They were far more challenging than my tight clients because their range of motion was so ridiculous. They had such little control. I had to stop the reps short and watch them very carefully because they could easily squat ass to grass and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but because they lacked the strength and stability, they would hurt themselves. Yeah. And it was really challenging. Uh, it's such situation. it's such a good point that you bring up, Justin, because I, I you know, 
when I'm coaching mobility, the main thing that I have to coach is not the movement or exercise itself, but the intent. Yeah. Yes. So I mean that was and that was kind of the the motivation behind the the webinar, right? The yeah. Prime Pro webinar that I shot years ago was to show Nobody people cues like that. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, and that's I had to give you credit for that cuz it's like as you're doing, you have to be like, I need to be tense right here. I need to feel this muscle being fired up and, and activated through this stretch. Otherwise, it it's should not be doing a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you just naturally go to the end range and you don't gain any more access. Right. Yeah. You just, in order to gain that access, you have to create that isometric tension to gain that new access, that new range of motion, and really see serious improvement. If you just see somebody on YouTube doing some mobility exercise and you hear everyone talking talking about mobility, 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 you're like, okay, I'm going to start trying to do mm -hmm. this. And you start doing some lizard with rotation, some combat stretch. You start doing some of these moves and you do it for a while and you're like, that isn't shit. Now, now I fall in the camp of the other side that is going like, oh yeah, it's a bunch yeah. of bullshit, a waste of time. It's not really helping people. It's exactly. like, well, no, the, how you do it is so important because if, if you don't do it with the right intent, then yeah, it will come off that way. All right, here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS Anabolic, the most popular MAPS workout program, the one that started it all. We're gonna give away for free. Here's how you can win. You have to leave a comment under this episode in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, you also have to subscribe to this channel and click on notifications. If you do all those things and we like your comment, we'll notify you under your comment, hey, you won, and then let us know uh, where we can send your free access to, okay? So that's what's going on right now. Also, before we start the episode, we're running a sale right now. The RGB bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, it's a bundle, it's already discounted. That's an additional 50% off, plus we threw in some free stuff, so go check that out. Or we're also running a 50% off sale on an individual MAPS program, MAPS Suspension. It's a suspension trainer-based workout program. So do your whole workout with just one pair of suspension trainers. So that's also 50% off. So if you're interested in either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50, so JULY50 with no space, for that massive discount. All right, here comes the show. Yeah. I had... Uh, kind of a loose conversation around this topic with my kids. Cause we, so we just got back from Vegas to visit family, but we also went and watched some shows. And one of the shows we saw was uh, mad apple. It's a new Cirque du Soleil show, which by the way, best Cirque du Soleil show that I've ever seen. Really? It, oh, it was incredible. And I'm going to get into the conversation in a second, but it was so good because it was, uh, it was broken up with stand up comedians. Oh, so wow. they would do an act. Interesting. And then like uh, Brad Williams came out and did an act. And then a couple other guys I'd never heard of that were hilarious came out. So in between certain acts, there would be stand up. Hmm. And I thought it was such a great combination. Uh, Interesting. Very entertaining, super entertaining. But anyway, you know, in the Cirque shows, they often have people that do either contortion type stuff or performance with this like extreme mobility and ranges of motion. And as we're watching this, my kids are like, you know, afterwards they're like, how do these people not like hurt bending backwards and like there's the a lot of these aerial acts in there and one of the aerial acts is where a guy will hold onto a strap with one arm hang with one arm and support someone else and twist and, and spin, spin like and the yeah. shoulder mobility insane. is insane and he's like how do they not like how can they do that and i said well through practice and through training they own that in the, all those ranges of motion they own. Like if I moved your arm in yeah. that p position, even if I could move it in that position, you'd have no control over it. You'd have no, you would not, you wouldn't have strength there. You'd hurt yourself. That guy and that girl up there, every single one of those positions is strong. Yeah. So that's what I was kind of, you know, breaking. Yeah, they had to well, you all, overload themselves to get to that point. Yes. You, you know. also have to remember too, that you were looking at the, the pinnacle of that. Oh, also, that's as right? extreme as it So gets. that's like, it's also like talking to your kids about looking at NFL players or NBA totally. players and being like, how did he just 360 yeah, dunk totally. like that? It's like, okay, well <laughs> one, he has practiced that his entire life yeah. to get good at that. Two, he's also the one percentile that's genetically gifted to be able to do that. Dude. So you have the combination of these people yeah. that have hypermobility and strength as it is and then they've compounded that by training it for decades and decades their whole lives so yeah. so in the Cirque shows there are aerial acts where they typically pluck from uh gymnastics and you know competitive aerial type sports and then there's these traditional circus acts that you don't get in gymnastics and stuff but you have to go to these family circuses in Europe, Italy, very common. Well, they'll go to these small circus acts and pluck children 
and recruit them because they're, they do these, like there's acts, certain acts that you just don't see anywhere except for in circuses. For example, there was this woman who literally her, she had long hair. She attached her hair to this cable oh, and I've did, stuff like that. and it would yank her in the air oh. and she would use these aerial acts in the air yeah. attached by her hair. That's yeah. crazy, now, dude. I mean, her neck strength must, was just ridiculous. As I'm watching this, I'm like, how is this not yeah. ripping her, you know? And, but you can see like a receding hairline because she practices all the time. <laughs> so her hair's getting it's ripped be out, so dude. gnarly, like headaches Bro, wise and everything. So crazy, but so impressive to see yeah. this extreme, you know. But Jessica was telling me because you know she she traveled with uh, Cirque du Soleil for years, and she's like, oh yeah, they go to. Because I'm like, where do they find? Like, where are you going to find someone that yeah. hangs from your hair? And she's like, that's <laughs> actually an old circus act, and they would go. They go to these circuses around the world, like huh. Russia, Italy, and I forgot where else. And they find these people and they pay them to come do these weird, you know, crazy acts that you won't see. Have Dude, you ever that's crazy. Have you ever asked her how, like, I've always been curious, like, how well they get paid at, like, at different levels. Like, Very good question. So they get paid, the, the performers tend to get paid really well, um, especially if the act that you do. Is centered around you? Or, or not only centered around you, but not letting many people do them. So oh. the circus acts, the real rare ones, it's really hard to find people to do certain acts like yeah. the straps and like certain aerial acts and uh, like people who fire a uh, bow and arrow with their feet, stuff like that. They can get paid high often because you have like such a low supply of people that do it. So have you ever mm -hmm. asked her kind of like with the ranges, like what's like, you'll never believe who some of the highest like paid, the most novel you get paid the most. You know who some of the highest paid people in Cirque the guy, are? the guy to be the guy fucking with the, the tigers. Oh, uh, what about they, the well, fire eaters? <laughs> yeah. They don't do animals at Cirque du Soleil. Oh, okay. Yeah, they don't, okay. Uh, um, I but, guess not. There's a lot of those. But now, of course, it ranges. Depends on the, the okay, act. Okay, so tell the, the I show. Hear, Which what? The clowns. What? Okay, so. Oh, there's a clown school, right? There's bro. a whole university. So first off, clowns. people don't know this. I, I learned know this from Jessica. When I, before I met her, I thought clowns were like, you know, red <laughs> nose, colored face, <laughs> act stupid, right? Yeah. No, it's the guy or girl that comes out that opens a show, entertains you, does acts in between, and basically oh, makes the show. You're right, because you know what? They orchestrate it so much that if something goes wrong, it's their job to go in there and like entertain the crowd still, right? They like, also have to have yeah. multiple skills. That's what so I mean. They, yeah, they'll either, they, 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 they can juggle, juggle, they can spit yeah. fire, they can, like this guy, this clown for Mad Apple was so good that he was speaking in different accents, he was telling jokes, so he was hella funny. He did this one act where he had this, this beer, on this like rope and then he spun it around so the beer but the beer wouldn't fly and you think he's gonna throw it at everybody and it was legit like he was balanced like a weird act right then he did shadow puppets and did this whole comedy act around it so and I, she was like oh he's really good she goes you know clowns are some of the hardest people to find some of the highest paid my kids are like freaking out like what they are I was like, yeah. so what's the range like huh. what's the problem? oh i don't know what the oh you don't know how the no, no, give, give me no some idea. range here Dude, they got a bad and rap from horror so now movies. you got me thinking here okay so it rodeos clowns are always there so is that like uh if you didn't make it and you, <laughs> <laughs> is that like if you if you didn't quite yeah. make this that's entry leg, level yeah, yeah you get you get, you get the, the hip replacement you're like I'll just be a clown or that's now. like you that's your internship you got to start there you get chased by some bulls and shit <laughs> <laughs> get blasted <laughs> yeah get blasted wow <laughs> I didn't think about that yeah because they, they they always have Dude, like that's two, a rough job rodeo yeah, clown, yeah rodeo clowns me? are yeah. rough they you had to juggle they, 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 they take on the, the bull a lot of times just to get the guy out but I never I never assumed they were high paid so I wonder I don't know how much they get paid. But I know that the perks are really good. Like, I mean, can I can can somebody in an act make beyond six figures, or is it like you're more into traveling and art, and so you're not? I, really I know that they're 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 well paid, but also What's not the only fuck do you does well, that mean you keep saying that? To I me? think I think it's in the six figures. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm pretty so, sure it's in the six figures. Uh, um, well, it says most between thirty and a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, well, that's because there's so. I mean, I bet, but I bet the Cirque ones are paid higher than that, right? Or are you looking at? It depends person? on probably how well the show is too. That's right? what and, I mean. Yeah. And then, and then when they travel with them, I would think that maybe housing's part of the, covered. Yeah, housing and food is probably food covered. is covered. So that's you travel. So the if you world. make hundred k a year and you don't have to pay for housing or food, that's good money. And you're traveling the world and yeah. you're just like, like, could you imagine that? Is I that mean, how it works? What are you seeing, Doug, right now? Yeah, I mean, most are offered a one to two year contract with a competitive salary, and what I'm seeing here is between thirty and hundred thousand dollars a year. That's Big, big range. Yeah. They're counting all circus acts and all clowns. So mm. I'm pretty sure Cirque but, is at the top, right? For No, I'm talking Cirque du Soleil. Really? Yeah. yeah interesting. So then it's like, I, I trained a girl who was uh, trying to try out for it one time. Really? Yeah, a long, long time ago. And I remember, but I don't remember asking her how much money they made. But I do remember it was better than I thought. Like, I didn't think it was a well-paid position. Mm -hmm. I thought that's like a passion type of deal mm -hmm. that you would do because so many people aspire to do that. 
Um, but I, I guess if you're making a hundred K and you don't got to pay for and any, you don't got to pay for any, and you get to go to yeah. all kinds of different countries and get everything taken. I would imagine it, it attracts a, a lot of like young 20 year olds, I would think, right. People that are like early age, don't have families. Yeah. Like, well, you know, she did tell me that there were people though with families who bring their kids, the kids would get schooling, you know, travel schooling or whatever. And the parents would, well, would would do the show. You know, uh, what's his name? Steve O from Jackass. Yeah. Yeah. Like he went to like a clown school. Like a, Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. And so he learned the trade of like the circus clown. And then obviously like shifted that over to, to doing what he does. But like it makes sense because he's just like he'll do so many random things and just like like destroy th- parts of his body, you know, just because. I wonder how popular clown school is. Like, is, is there, are they all over the place or is there like a couple in the country? Not you know? sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause what, what's the main one? Like uh Barnum and Bailey or whatever. No, or, that's it. That's so, old school. Yeah. Circus. That, and they're, they're not doing well. That's a traditional circus. Yeah. Well, I no traditional circus uh, is not as without animals. I think if I'm not mistaken, What? if you go way back, what? I be- yeah, I believe the traditional circuses, they started in Europe and they were about, they were human performances, if I'm not mistaken. Doug, I are we going to fact check this case? He's been wrong a lot lately. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> no, no, he's been wrong. Can to... we talk about <laughs> this? <laughs> he's been wrong a lot lately, Doug. Adam's been chomping hey, at the bit. What's going on with you over there, dude? It happened. It did happen. It draining it out of you. I got DMs for days, dude. So did I. Confirming it. I was wrong. People do, I don't know what episode it was, but people do in movies pump up before scenes. It's yeah, for dude, sure. I mean, Get a pump. On, for sure. Bro, yeah. you're shooting for eight, nine hours a day? You pump course, up? Of course, of course. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I definitely had a lot of people tell me, like, for sure, like, Natalie Port, it was, like, green screened. Oh, CGI. Yeah, CGI. I heard that, Oh, too. wow, now you're hearing CGI. Because she looked jacked, bro. Yeah. Compared to how she normally looks. Well, especially looks. all the promotional, like, marketing and stuff that they're showing, like, certain shots and, like, mm. pictures. Like, I was like, that doesn't look real. Yeah. Well, dude, so, uh, back to the, the search. She was in shape. But Back not, to the search show. Much. It was 16 and over. I brought my 12 year old, and it was a little bit. There were moments where I was like, hmm, especially the comedians. The comedians came out and were doing some humor. So Brad Williams comes out. Obviously, he's, he's you know, he's a dwarf. And yeah. he was talking about how his friend is a dwarf and she's dating a guy who's like 6'3. And then he starts talking about what the hand jobs look like. And he's like, he's like running across the stage, like ah, and I'm, and I'm, I got like one eye on my daughter, and she's, tr- you, you, you remember when you were a kid and yeah. you tried not to laugh at jokes in front of your parents because you don't want your parents to know that that yeah. you know, yeah, that you know he's talking. So about. I'm looking at her, and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, why are you laughing? She's like, oh, sorry, <laughs> the whole show was like that. There was so much shit like that. I'm like, why did I bring her? Oh, oh no, wow. it was bad. Dude. Oh, you know oh, what else man. we saw out there was uh, Chris Angel. Oh, how was that? Dude, I'll tell you what, uh, really good. Obviously, you can see why the guy's uh, well-known. There was one, so my kids- He wears a lot of eyeliner. He has tons of eyeliner. That's like like the move, Is he sponsored by someone like Mac or something? (laughs) Maybelline. Chris Angel. He's a, he's a- Probably actually has his own, if he's smart, he has his own makeup line, actually. Check that out. I bet he he does. Yeah. 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 He's not, you know the picture of Chris Angel in in Vegas has got his like six pack and he's all ripped or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't look like that anymore. (laughs) He gave up on that. Yeah, dude. Uh, He got the same picture. He's like, I'll leave his He got his contract, bro. Yeah, I know. Right? Isn't it? How long did he sign for? He signed for a couple years, didn't he? Long, bro. It, Long? Yeah, because his show, uh, Mind Freak, was on TV in 2010. I, I think he started show. in Vegas shortly after that. So he's been out there for like 10, maybe eight eight years. Yeah. Wow. Which is a long time for a Vegas Does show. Does Carrot Top still have his deal out there or yeah. is he done? He's, yeah, still, he's going still going out there. It. Yeah. Wow. They yeah, do sign crushes. big they sign big long deals then. Yeah. You go you go out there to get paid and to finish your career, right? Isn't That's that the, it. Yeah. The whole deal? It, I mean it's it's like I've a all, guaranteed gig at that I point. thought it's always been kind of the butt of the old jokes of a lot of the comedians and the and like entertainers. That's where you go to finish your career. Yeah, is that what it is? I, so that's the joke. Yeah, but it's a joke, but he's still cashing it in. I mean, people still go to his show, constantly love it. Well, so he well, gets a lot can of Can you praise. find his contract? I want to know how much he got paid for that. Yeah, Chris, Chris Angel? Angel's contract for Vegas, yeah. I want, and, and or Carrot Tops. I'm curious, like, what the payday looks like it, because I know I've heard entertainers make fun of it, like it's a like you don't want to go there. It's like where careers go to die is Vegas. I think it's because when people go out there, they're done touring. Yeah, so it's like okay, now I'm settled. It's, it's like a residency, career. so you're just there yeah. and you don't tour anymore. Yeah, dude, yeah. there's this one this one tri- act or whatever that he did that. My kids were like, they lost their shit, bro. So we were like six rows back, really nice seats or whatever, good uh-huh. seats. And he does this one where he he they, he throws a sheet over himself, he levitates, then the, then he disappears, the sheet falls, and the fucking guy appears in the seat in front of us. It just jumps up, <laughs> turns around. What? My kids lost their mind. Did you catch it? 
Yeah, well, I, I saw him run down the aisle and get in front of us, but I don't understand how he went from the stage to there so quickly. Like, it literally, it disappeared. He runs by and gets in front of us. I'm like, how did that happen? It must have been someone else on stage. But anyway, like my, kids, body double. my yeah. kids didn't see him do any of that. All they saw was guy turns around, takes off his jacket, and it's him, and he stands up, and he's literally right in front of us, and they lost their mind. I'm looking at my kids, <laughs> and they're like, oh, like, yes, dude. Yes, bro. So the show brings in $70 million a year. He has a 10-year contract, and he's supposedly worth about uh, $50 million himself. Okay. So, okay, that's not bad at all for a yeah. magician. Yeah, that's, that's, that's But it doesn't say what his contract was. It huh? does not say. So you, I so can't you give me it. his net worth of what is $50 million. I mean, I mean again, who knows if that's true or not? Yeah, those things I are mean, always weird. I mean, because, you know, what they say. I mean, about that's going to buy him a lot yeah, more yeah. bracelets. <laughs> 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 hey, can I say something? Chris Angel. Can I tell you something about I don't know any, much about him. I don't want to crap everybody out, but I, I respect the guy quite a bit now. So why would they crap you? Because I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. So in his show, like kind of like maybe two thirds of the way through, they he there's like this real emotional moment, and they're showing pictures of him visiting kids that are obviously very sick. And you guys know me when I see kids that are sick or whatever, it just totally ruins me. So I'm watching. I'm and I'm mad. I'm like, why are you showing this in the show? And I get to ruin. I have like a bad time or whatever. I'm watching this, and it's him with these kids and. Kids are sick, and then some are bald. So I'm like, okay, they have cancer. That makes it even worse. And I'm watching. I didn't know this. His oldest has been battling cancer for a while, and he started a foundation. Oh, and man. so that's what they were talking about. So I felt real bad for feeling angry. At first, I'm getting angry. Like, what are you trying to show? Like, how cool you are helping these kids? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. And mad been. about ruining my time. Backfire. But then he yeah. showed that, and I felt real bad or whatever. How old is his Donated oldest? some money. Um, that's a good question. I think... I want to say 12, mm. I want to say, but mm. just beat it apparently back in February. Oh, so really? Yeah. So he's had this, this huge foundation for oh, children great. with, uh, you know, with pe for pediatric cancer. So I you know, still want to get to the bottom it. of the dollar, man. I'm just super curious <laughs> what these guys make. Yeah. I am. Is, am I the only one that's heard that a bunch of times? Like, haven't you guys heard other, yeah. other entertainers talk yeah. about that? Yep. Yeah. And I've always wondered, like, I've always thought this sounds like a better deal. I would rather be in the Not same. Not have to travel. Yeah. So I've always assumed that like that sounds like I a better yeah. better gig. Buy my place. Buy a place. I think it is a better gig. I think that there's some weird like jealousy amongst the entertainers with that. Right. So that's like, what I'm wondering. Yeah. Is it a jealousy thing? They're just being haters, or are I you making being significantly haters. less than what you are if you're touring the world? Well, according to this, Carrot Top makes eight million per year. That's not bad, that's not dude. Bad not too bad. For he wouldn't make that shit just touring. Staying there. Yeah. Oh, no, not. I don't think so. No. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to live on the strip though. Because yeah. you know, if you, you perform live with on hard the hard rock, you live a strip. You uh, live off the strip. And I know. Come in. Uh, what do I thought? Yeah, screw that. I was just watching like an old clip. Of, well, I don't know how old it was. A clip of him talking about how, uh, like, how when he got all jacked and stuff. Because when he did the deal with Luxor, he, that, that's all he had to do was do his performance, and then he so was he just started it, working nothing out. else to do. Yeah, so he started working out, putting face implants, and yeah, he got a bunch of steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you give someone eight million, you give someone eight million dollars a year and nothing to do, yeah. and only like you have a two hour show. Like well, how many times? Because they don't perf do they perform every night? They don't. Perform he had every some night. balloon packs at one point. I want to say some of them five nights a week. Yeah, yeah, probably five nights a week. Yeah, maybe. so you're you're probably working for if it's a, an no, hour it's show. No, it's not five nights a week. It's probably like three nights out of the week. Probably Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you do uh, two or three shows. I would think. Really? Yeah, does three hundred shows a year. Year. Damn! Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, well, they get three, three in a night, three in a night. So that's basically what we just said: Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three nights, th three shows a night. Is that three hundred nights? So that's more actually. So it's less than that. Really? It's less than Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three shows. My math. Is you know right. what the challenge with that would be? Would be like showing the same level of enthusiasm yeah. year after year. Yep. Like, how, like I thought about that watching Chris Angel. I'm like, is he really excited about doing this? Yeah, because like, I know he's done this. How many show. times does he add new act, you know, parts to his act too? You know, because you get real comfortable. Yeah. Too being there, like that's the thing about like traveling too. I think it like sparks a little more innovation and creativity. I mean, I would think the first year or two would be awesome because you would probably enjoy that side of it. That it's like you could do it in your sleep because yeah. you've done it so much. But then I would think years three, four, five of like like. You would have to want to change some of your stuff up, or else it would. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, I would imagine. I mean, imagine this us getting on here every day. If we had to say the say the same stuff, yeah. like the exact same stuff yeah. every single time, like you'd have to find like scripted. ways. Scripted. Yeah, yeah, that would be. I would. I would awful. just mess with you guys have, you know, while we're doing it. <laughs> it looks like he performs every day except for Sunday. Oh. So one show, one, one. So you got a two hour, two hour work day. Well, you don't think he also has to show up a couple hours before? So it's probably four hours a day, but seven days a week ugh, or six days a week. That's that's yeah. that's decent. Yeah. That's well, eight bad. eight million. I and the contract. Would you say it was a ten year? Is that what I heard? Uh, you five say? year, I believe. Five year, yeah, five year. Oh, see, that's kind of cool. Forty million. Yeah, that's not bad at all. And then huh. cash yeah. out and be done after that. Yeah. 
That's wow. hot. That's hot. Speaking of things that are hot, Adam, I, I, I didn't think you could get even hotter, but apparently you got too hot. I want to hear about what happened. <laughs> I got when you were out in, in trucking. I got a sun fever, dude. I didn't even know what that, <laughs> didn't even know what that was. What? That's, that's like five-year-olds get that. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, How'd you forget? Well, so, so you're in the sun, you forgot well, to drink so water? It goes, it goes uh, sun fever, heat exhaustion, and then uh, heat stroke, right? So, so you get to first base. Uh, yeah, I got the first oh, base. Yeah. <laughs> of the, well, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, first of all, I'm sure Cabo didn't help, right? So we had the week there. I pushed the limits in Cabo. I was on the. I was on a mission to just to get as dark as I could, and like I, w I really wanted to show you guys what I used to look like as a kid. <laughs> so I was like, I was much, really. Yeah, I did. I was like, I'm gonna show these guys how dark I scorched. Get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can get hella dark, dude. Watch. Yeah. So I was on this mission in Cabo. Got pretty dark. Then we had that break, and then we went back, and then I'm in Truckee. Truckee was hot. And we were in pools and lakes, and I was not eating very much. So I was skipping breakfast. I just not eating, uh, not eating very much food. So, and then when I was eating, I was actually eating pretty good. I was eating pretty healthy, so I wasn't getting a lot of sodium. Mm. And then you add in the fact that I wasn't drinking any water. If I was drinking, it was either a diet coke or it was alcohol. And and we had like back to back days of like sitting in the sun, and I was like laying in the sun, like I was You're not dehydrated, just. Totally. And, but it, it didn't really hit me because I was like sipping on some things. And I was, like I said, I was drinking fluids. I wasn't drinking a lot of water. And what, what it, what was weird was it, what didn't hit me till the night and I was cold. So I was like, I, the, and the, I remember so you're like, I'm getting sick. Yeah. So I thought maybe I was getting sick or something and, but I didn't have any other symptoms other than like my, my temperature. And then I was getting these bad headaches, bad headaches. And then the, and then that my, my temperature started right. I could feel my I could feel my body on fire, but I was cold. See, this is why you need to take me with you all the time. Yeah. You know, I would have been yeah, I know. feeding you water. I, I know, I know. <laughs> and Katrina's like, "What's wrong with you? Are you sick?" I'm like, "No, I don't. I don't feel sick, but my body temperature just feels really weird. Like I can feel my skin is on fire. Like I can feel my body like super hot, but I'm freezing. Mm -hmm. And I would be, and I'd bundle all up, and then I'd be. Now you weren't paying attention to your urine. It was it dark. Or was so it, it like, didn't get to that point. It didn't get to the point. You just where, didn't pee much. Yeah. I, and it didn't get to a point where it was like it was because I know that's another thing that they'll, they say to look at is your pee. I of course I was on, you know, uh, what you call it all all day. Ratemypee uh, dot com. No, no, <laughs> not. What's the what's the what's the the doctor one site. the one that everybody does? Also, need to become a doctor after you. Oh, uh, WebMD. Yeah, WebMD. Yeah. Thank you. I was on WebMD like, all day. Oh, I got cancer. Well, Damn you it. know, I would. That's why I. I I was, of course, afraid of a potential heat stroke first. Yeah. And so I was on there, and there was a lot of things on there. I was like, okay, I don't have all of those symptoms, so maybe it's not this. And then I started thinking, I, I don't feel sick. What could it be? But then I started looking up other things, and then it was like heat exhaustion. Oh, that looks closer to what I have. And then I look at sun fever. I'm like, oh, sun fever is exactly the symptoms that I have. Sun like, fever sounds like a like a disco song from the 70s. <laughs> 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 I got that son. Uh, Staying alive. So no, what, but so what, so what'd you do? So what I ended up doing, and I and I, that's when I knew this is what a, what what it was was I was depleted of salt and water. Mm -hmm. Is I pounded uh, two LMNTs. So I did LMNT back to back like that, and then just kept sucking the water down, and literally could just feel my my body's temperature start just to fix. Change. Yeah, start to acclimate. But I did it did roll into the next day a little bit to where I was like fatigued still. And I could tell that I didn't want to get out in the sun or that, so I kind of stayed around the house and just laid around. And then by the next day, I felt perfect again. That, by the way, if you sometimes you have to be careful drinking too much too quickly when you're in that state. Some people will throw up because oh, they can't; they just can't absorb. It. But the the salt actually makes it makes a difference and helps. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it was wild to feel um, a difference, like how how quickly it started to to turn, make my body turn around and feel better with just by getting that in. That's when I. Because of course I'm the opposite of you. Like you're like Mister, you know, paranoia about everything, and you think you have every. You always think you have cancer. Like every every week, Sal's like, I think I have got this kind hey, of cancer. You're the guy that runs Real out of gas supplements. on I'm the fucking true. road. I'm the opposite yeah. twice. So I'm like, you're I'm <laughs> Katrina's telling me I'm not feeling well, and I'm like, Nah, I'm just I'm hot from the sun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but you're bleeding. Yeah, she's like, You have a jacket on inside the house. It's 80. She's like, she's like, you're not fine. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't know, something weird, I'm just right? Gonna so weather it out. I'm like that, but then I'm like, Okay, I better get on. off. I better get on yeah, WebMD off, and start dude. like searching. And I'm like, okay, I'm checked that off. I don't have a heat stroke, so that's okay. And then, and then I finally get the sun fever one. And I'm like, okay, well, if I pound this water and I get some good salt, because of course that's like the they give you the this is it. This is what. You know. So let me ask you this: When did you start drinking it? Did you feel like, oh my god, I need this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 That's I've, when I. That's when the kind of the light bulb moment of like, oh fuck. That's then I actually started to recount my day. 
because I actually didn't even really think that I did. I was like, oh shit, you know what? I haven't been eating breakfast the last couple of days. Even when I eat, I'm actually eating pretty lean and light. I wasn't eating bad, so I wasn't eating a lot so of So sodium food. low and low water. Yeah. And sweating. And yeah, and then I started thinking, oh man, when did I, I said I had like one little bottle of water in the last like 24 hours. The rest has been Diet Cokes or alcohol. So you did two back to back. So that's 2,000 milligrams of sodium yeah. right out the gates. Yeah, and you but instantly it. made me feel way better. You know, know what's funny is that the sun uh, fever or heat exhaustion was relatively common when we were in school in sports because coaches- do you guys remember when coaches would coaches tell Coaches would not let you go get water. It used to be a discipline thing. They yeah. would be like, if you were not running fast enough or not pushing enough, nope, you don't get a water break. Yeah. yeah. Dude, they literally <laughs> had it out. So yeah. it was like PVC, like with holes yeah. in it. So it was like you're drinking like a cattle. Right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. you only had like a brief moment to to go get water. And like, yeah, that, that was the whole thing. It was all, it was mainly our JV year. We had like coaches that were like the weekend warrior coaches yeah. that didn't know what the fuck they're talking about, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. They, they would just dehydrate the hell out of all yeah. of us to make you tough. Oh, you know? it was, it was, uh, or they would do this. I, I remember, uh, as a, I remember learning this as a trainer and then thinking back to when I was a kid and I was like, those morons, you would get, remember you get a side stitch when you're running Yeah. and what would the teacher, the PE teacher say? Oh, it's cause you drank water. It's the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cramping. It's yeah. the opposite. Yeah. It's because I need yeah, water. Too much water. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so uh, talking really? about the opposite of, of coaches is perfect for this. Did you guys see that study that finally came out confirming the fact that leaning over, hunching over on your hands and knees helps you your heart rate to recover a lot more uh, uh, appropriately than, than your hands up like this and standing around, which your coach always tells you you have to do. Like, get up and put your hands up on your head to recover. I'm like, I feel way better doing it this way. Oh, so actually hunching over is Hunching better. over oh helps my God, you recover been, that been, much I've faster. I've been trained to open up your lungs yes. and lift your hands up forever. So, and, so and that's just perception, right? Like, it, it, it amounts to perception because coaches don't like to see their, uh, like, it shows that you're tired. Right? So, yeah, so yeah. what you're telling me is the thing that everybody says feels best yeah, is the one thing is that the was, one that, that is was, proven, uh, and yeah, that was natural. Study. So I didn't know that came out. That just came yeah. out. Or, yeah, that's fascinating. See, validating, is, and, and this is why this is the th sometimes beliefs happen, and then people become so bound to them and ignore all the signs and symptoms. That right, they, ignore, ignore, ignore the natural <laughs> the thing inclination. You your yeah, body's yeah, like, I want to lean over. Yeah. What is it? That's so annoying to me. Yeah, that is so damn annoying. Yeah, I had so many coaches tell me the opposite of that, especially when I was like. I remember when I was testing to make the team when I was like at San Jose State and we had to run, uh, because I was a walk-on, we had to run this timed liners, basically. So you mm -hmm. do like 25 yards back, 50 yards back, 75 yeah. back, 100 back, right? And you had to do it under, I don't remember the time length, but it was like unreasonable. And so everybody would fail. And so I was like, I'm not going to fucking fail. I'm going balls to the wall, you know? It's so like as hard as I possibly could. And I just made it within a few seconds. And I was like, thank God. I literally thought like my internal organs were going to just come out. <laughs> and, and I'm like on the ground, like, Ugh. and then you're like, get up and put your hands up. Like, yeah, fuck you, dude. I just put everything out there. You know, I'm not doing that. So this is like, I would have been loved to point to, you know, actually study show. <laughs> yeah. And just like turn that card. Just on. So now yeah. what'll be really interesting because just because that study came out does not mean that it'll make its way to high nope. schools and stuff. Coaches aren't going to give a fuck about for that. For a very long no, time. High school coaches are 10 years behind you. Like, yeah. So even that, the water thing, I'm kind of like, I get it. You know, like uh, dealing with these kids and like, I'm going to get some water. Yeah. Maybe. Like every two seconds. Like, <laughs> no, you don't get water right now. Oh, yeah, I need to be hydrated. My mom said that. No, <laughs> <laughs> you need to be tough. Tell That's why you, know, you need to you have, you have like an assistant who just has like a hose and the kid that just, just sprays them. <laughs> spray. There's some water. You shit. Get back on the field. <laughs> We do need that. Yeah, dude. wouldn't that I be great? Definitely. Do that. <laughs> Open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fire hose. Just blast them. There's your water break. You hydrated now? Dude, I, I got to tell you guys, uh, it's, it's a funny story. So uh, my my youngest now, he's, I want to say, he's, he's 21 months almost, right? He's full on entering into toddler stage. So you know yeah. classic toddler stage, right? They challenge all boundaries. Yeah. They love saying no. No. They, yeah. It's, it's like, a, it's like the, you know, toddler, right? Classic. Yeah. So he's becoming that now. So now when we travel, like we were on a plane again from Vegas, you know, Jessica and I are looking at each other like, eh, I don't know if we're going to do this for a little while. Cause he's a handful. You got to keep your, you got to keep your eyes on him and 
keep them occupied. Well, anyway, oh, yeah. I had this funny, this weird experience. So we're getting on the plane. We get on first because we're, you know, I, I got us priority so we could hurry up and all sit together. He's already acting like a little turkey. He wants to be with her. He wants to be with me. He wants to stand up. He wants to play with the tray that comes down. If we don't let him, he'll scream, you know, for like two seconds or three seconds. And he, you know, he wants to do something else. So we're already like juggling him back and forth. And as people are coming on the plane, you know, one guy comes up to me, fist bumping me, and he goes, hey, man, I love your show. I really appreciate my mm. Oh, thank you very much, right? Well, anyways, it happens like three different times. Three different people come on the show. So all on they, the pl- same plane? All on the same plane. Wow. Going to Vegas? So, wow. No, coming back from Vegas. Oh, coming back from Vegas. So we all sit down, and my son is acting like a little little turkey, right? And I'm already, I'm thinking like, oh, man, I got to be like <laughs> yeah, perfect. People are watching. Yeah, people know me. <laughs> like, I can't lose my shit. I got to be perfect. Sal on TMZ <laughs> the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Like, ah, like, my bubble host Al DeStefano. I'm like, I want to turn a on, child in, in airplane. I want, I want to turn on cartoons and put it in front of him, sit here and watch him. Like, but wait a minute, people watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you. I think you're just at the. Uh, I think Katrina and I got lucky and timed it because um, we flew early and then we flew recently with Max. But there was a, a, a period where we didn't fly with him, and I'd say it was between one years old mm-hmm. and I think two. Because <clears throat> he was an absolute saint the last two times we 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 flew with him at almost he's three now and yeah. he was almost three and we did it when he was breastfeeding still so breastfeeding it was easy because he could be on we could be on uh, Katrina and then when he was like two and a half three years old now he's kind of like old enough that like I can entertain him yeah and, and he's and he'll do his puzzle or he'll watch a movie or do something like that but the age that you're at I had I think it has more to do with that that age range probably got to be real unless you just have a real docile quiet kid. Yeah, that's got to be the most he's, restless, hard time. He's a good, he's a good kid. kid. He just he's active. He knows what he wants, and now he's testing boundaries. For example, when yeah. he sits down at the, the table, he one time he put his foot up on the table, right, his little bare foot, and we're like, we don't put our feet on the table when we. Eat. Well, what do you think he does now when he wants to see what Out you're of gonna defiance, do? Yeah. yeah, literally, he'll look at you yeah. in the face yeah. and then he'll go <laughs> put his foot Dude, up there my best, just to test you. You know, my best friend's yeah. son is at he's my best friend's son is four mm-hmm. and he's at that age and he's actually ten. He um he tested Katrina where he he told Katrina like, you're not my mom you can't tell me what to do. Oh, that's uh, great. And and Katrina's like, or, uh, my best friend's uh, wife Janet and Justin were like, hey, you need he's gonna be like that this week, so don't you go light on him because he's my son. You rip into him if he does that because he's at this age like that. And they <clears throat> he was giving me the same thing. So no, he hasn't really messed with me. I said, there's a couple of things I've had to check him with the sharing and stuff like that, but he hasn't. He goes, really? He hasn't done that all to you? I said, well, yeah, he did one time. And I said, then I think I said all that. He goes, what'd you say to him? I said, you keep running your, I said, you keep acting like that, Hunter, and I'm going to beat your dad up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, look, look on that kid's Don't face. Do that? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how to react to that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I said, one. hey, since then, he hasn't yeah. said shit to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they got so mad at me. They're like, "Don't you tell my son that?" <laughs> He's like, yeah. and I was like hey, "It I was worked." Like, well, yeah, it yeah. worked. And then I thought, "Well, there can't be the other." That. And then his wife chimed. He goes, "Great. Now I'm going to have him. He's going to be telling other kids at school that his dad's going to beat up their dad, and then I'm going to get some <laughs> UFC fighter knocking on my fucking door with cauliflower here, going like, so uh, you're Hunter's dad, huh?'" Yeah. <laughs> my kid said that you're you a tough guy. Up. Yeah. <laughs> No, dude. That's, yeah. uh, I said it worked though. I said he's been behaved mm. himself all week after that dude, one. That's <laughs> hilarious. Hey, did you guys see the 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 study that uh, Joe Rogan shared that was kind of making it made its way all over social media? The glyphosate one. Did you hear about this? I didn't no. see that. So there was a study that showed that glyphosates. So you guys know what glyphosates are, right? They're yeah. the the chemicals that. Oh, I uh, did see this. Yeah. So so uh, GMO plants are engineered to withstand glyphosates because glyphosates kill plants. So what we do is we, we, we grow, like, for example, GMO corn. Right. Then what so we do just is we kills the insects. just spray the shit out of the cornfields and the glyphosates kill weeds and stuff like that, but the corn doesn't because it's been modified to not it was the year. It was the urine one. How, how much 80% is it? Yeah. of people tested had glyphosate residues higher than what they are supposed to have. In the urine. And, and the reason is because we literally sp- spray billions and billions and billions of gallons of the stuff all over the place. What? It goes up into the sky, rains down on us everywhere, right? What um, area, like, did they pull from all different areas yeah. of the country, not yeah. just like a concentrated? 80%. Wow. Yeah, 80%. So, and it's That's like, ridiculous. It's literally billions and billions and billions of gallons have been sprayed all over the place. So everybody's like up in arms and, you know, is this bad? Is this good? What are we going to do? Yeah, it's bad. 
Well, he, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's obvious. I I agree because the the because I had this. There was this one doctor on Twitter. I can't remember his name, but he goes, uh, many many studies have been done on glyphosates, and none of them have connected glyphosates to cancer because that's the big worry. And I'm like, well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. So he goes, well, well, do you have any evidence? I said, okay, well, we know how glyphosates work. They interrupt a pathway called the shikimati pathway which is what kills weeds, but the shikimati pathway is also found in many fungus, bacteria, and other life forms. So we're interrupting this important pathway in many, many life forms on earth. And to say that this is not going to have any potential negative effects is, I think, arrogant. Like, who oh, knows, yeah. you know, what this is going to cause generations from now, or even if it, what it's contributing to now. Like, we have testosterone levels plummeting, autoimmune dis diseases have exploded, <laughs> allergies have exploded. Is it one of the one of the the factors? I don't know, but I don't think you know. I don't think it's a good idea to blast the whole earth with this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable to be a little bit concerned about it. Yeah. What, what yeah. sucks about it is like it, it. And I remember when you did that interview with uh, Doctor Bush uh, years ago, and you talked about. I remember that just like ruined my day because it was like even if you think you're eating well, eating organic and everything like that, like you're still fucked because it's it's everywhere. Yeah, it's coming, getting picked back up, and then raining back down on on even your organic crops. He said, so like, in, if I believe yeah. he said in that interview, <laughs> if we stopped using glyphosates right now. It would take a hundred years for them to get out of the the, the environment. <laughs> so that's why I, I remember I listened just to crap. Like, everybody oh, man, just crap, bit. yeah, crap me out completely. Yeah, I thought, what am I doing all this for? I'm not. I'm still going to get it anyway. So yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know. But it made some controversy because there's people that are like, "Well, show me the evidence," and I hate that because uh, okay, just because there isn't scientific evidence doesn't mean it's very arrogant to say because there's no evidence, it's inner. It's of course it's right. not inner. You know, it's got, it, it affects this pathway that's in very important organisms uh, in the world. Uh, and we know bacteria. What's the motivation to argue so much against you, the fact that you should be concerned, right? Other than the fact that you're working for a company and, it, you know, this, this may be part of your product line or whatever. Like, what, what are the other motivations other than, like, if I'm concerned about my health, I'm concerned about everybody else's health, and this could be potentially be something harmful, well, why, well, look, why contest it so hard? Here's the, here's the argument that I would appreciate. I would appreciate scientists to come out and say, all right, look, here's a deal. Uh, we don't know all the potential effects. So far, the research shows it doesn't ha cause cancer. But here's a deal. We believe that the positives outweigh the negatives. We believe that the fact that it leads to greater crop yields and we can feed more people is better than, for For example, it'd be like saying fossil fuels. Yeah, they pollute the earth and this and that, but they also, we think that for most of human history when we've had it at least, right. it's led to more positives and negatives. Like I can appreciate those arguments, but what I can't appreciate are the whole, there's no evidence. So what is that? So what? Yeah. yeah, so far, yeah, right. You know, right. who knows what we're going to end up figuring out later on. Hey, where did you, um, where did you go on vacation? So I went a few different places. I, I called some audibles because we were just like, I don't know. I think I'm at, I was talking to Sal about this a little bit. Like, I'm at the age where like if something just doesn't like resonate and like I feel like uncomfortable, I'm like, oh, I'm out of here, dude. Oh wow, really? Yeah, you had that happen? Yeah, so we had that happen. We. Stayed in um, Cambria, which was fun. We got to. Where is that? I heard you say that. Where is that at? So it's like right up from San Luis Obispo. It's on the coast. It's rare Hearst Castle. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> I know where we, that is. We stay in this little town. It's a quaint little town. Like it's dog friendly. And so our idea, which was a stupid idea, which <laughs> it was to bring the dogs and the boys and everybody and go on a road trip and like go down and yeah. uh, do this and then go to a lake. And so I've been on this mission to like find other lakes in California. California to that I've never been to to see you know which ones are cool and like uh, <clears throat> things that I need to hang out with the kids more and because they started getting into fishing and I'm like I felt like you know uh, Everett got to catch some fish with his friends without me and I'm still like Ugh, like <laughs> <laughs> upset about that because <laughs> he, he hasn't caught any with me yet uh, so I was all pumped to do that and like we were going to go to this place uh, Lake Arrowhead and so we went there after we went to to Cambria. And, uh, I mean, it's a nice lake. It's like down South and in, in, um, near LA and it's all the way up. So it was like maybe an hour away from Palm desert, which is where we have like a rental property. And so I was like, well, this might be cool. If like, if it's a, if it's a nice lake, we could like jam up there every now and then and, and hang out. So we went up there and we, we rented a place and it was like a frame house. that was like, had adequate rooms and everything, but it was so tight. And then the dogs were just like so anxious the whole time we were there. 
and everything was just like uh, really hard to get to. Like the lake itself, you have to be like an owner to even have access to the lake. The whole thing's fenced off and like you can't just swim. You can't like just go to a beach. Like you have to be like a member of all these clubs and all this shit. So you just bounced. Yeah. I was like, dude, fuck this. Dude, we're out of here. <laughs> you guys have this stupid lake, you know? And so it was just like, that's so weird. Like, and there's other lakes close by. I was like uh big bear and, and some other like little, but they're all kind of like, eh. like the thing is I'm ruined because I, you know, I've been going to Tahoe like yeah. so many times and like, you can't beat Lake Tahoe ever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I think, Northern California lakes. I mean, I'm I'm definitely uh, biased, but yeah. uh, way better. Do you guys remember when you figured that out? Like what age it was? Where you figured out like, oh, I could just leave. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm I like, I paid money to stay there a couple of days. I'm like, dude, you know, I'm gonna just get eat this. Yeah, you know, let's go. And then everybody's like, yay! And we're just like, wow, okay. Cool. I, I actually. How I, long did you stick it out for? Well, we did a night, a one night, one night. That's that's it. It. and then you were next morning set up to be there for a few more days. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I was just like, guys. "We're out, man." Dude, you know, it's I, stupid. I remember the day that I remember I, that they came to me. I was probably thirty, and I remember sitting at the movie theaters watching a movie. Twenty minutes in, and I'm like, "This sucks." And then I'm like, "But I paid for it." I'm like, "I paid for it anyway." I'm just gonna leave, and I walked yeah. out. And I remember this like overwhelming. Stay here, be miserable, or just go. it was like an epiphany. Like yeah. I can do that whenever I want. I could just yeah. bounce. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same yeah. thing. So yeah. we so we went to our place in Palm Desert, which was hilarious. We didn't go there initially because it's the summer. And it's insanely hot. A million and, degrees. And <laughs> our, the pool that's there is being renovated and like totally oh, yeah. gutted. So it was non accessible. But uh, the the place was familiar. The dogs are cool there. And so everything was great. Plus, there's other pools on the, on yeah. the property. So we, right? we actually found out that you can do a pass at the other resorts. And so we did one at the Hyatt and like Marriott. And oh, so great. we just went to all the different pools. <laughs> Water slides. So the kids had a great time. But yeah, it was just so much better. But it was 116, dude. Oh. It was just like I could be outside for five minutes. And then I had like probably your, your, <laughs> your sun fever. Your sun fever, dude. <laughs> you got like, that sun oh. fever, baby. Yeah, I felt like I was melting. <laughs> did you guys see the, uh, did I show you guys the video of Max going down the slide? No. I can't believe it. Oh, really? I didn't send it to you? Did no. I send it to you? I, I, no. Oh, I, did, did you see it, Doug? Yeah, uh -huh. I saw it. Oh, okay. You yeah. saw, oh, I, I think I posted it. I just posted it on well, my maybe story. Maybe you posted it, yeah. It's, it's in I, your personal. Text that yeah. we do with Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, text Doug yeah, yeah, privately all the time. Yeah, we, don't we, tell the other so guys. So we hang out. So I'll give you this. Uh, at the Somerset place, I don't know if you guys ever seen that slide. I know you yeah. you have. Uh -huh. I don't know if you have or uh -huh. not. It's like a like a serious. It was like you remember going down uh, Tony Tony Robbins uh, yeah. slide like that. So it's a big. Oh, so it's a big slide. Yeah, it's a big slide into the pool. And I did not think he would. He doesn't even like to be in the pool without being close to me. I mean, you guys saw him in Cabo. Yeah, yeah. Like he wants to be close. That pool was cool because it was only three feet, so he could walk in it. Mm -hmm. But obviously, he can't swim, so he doesn't want to be in the deep end by himself. So <clears throat> the pool, he's kind of like skeptical about it. But I think because my other buddy's kids who are a little bit older were there and he was watching them go up with their dads and stuff like that and get on the slide, he wanted to go up there. So I actually took him up. I'll show you guys. I actually did a video. So I, my uh, buddy's wife had one of those um, like, you know, Ziploc bag things that for your phone. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So you could take so it in the water. water. Yeah. So I actually took it on the slide and him going down it. But oh, cool. I mean, I created a monster after that. That's all he wanted to do. <laughs> you know, he just wanted to do the slide all day. So you day. had to walk him up there. Oh, I think that's part of the sun fever. Was I was like <laughs> out there all day, and then all I'm doing is like walking up just these flight of stairs. Yeah. Like, oh, I must have did it 50 times, dude. He was so excited. But I was so pumped that he was willing to even do it because, I mean, it it's fast enough that it throws me back. Like, I can't I, – I was holding him, and you see I like fall back yeah. because the thing moves mm -hmm. so quick. But how do you yeah, – are, are you guys like – so I have this weird thing where if I'm on a trip – I haven't been on a trip uh, this many – like away days in a long time. Yeah. But do you guys get this where you miss of all things your bed where you go home and you're uh, like, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to go. So home. not when we, when we're up in, cause the Truckee place has amazing beds. I love those beds up at that place. That's like one of my, my favorite beds is the, the Truckee beds. But what we don't have there is we don't have AC cause it cools down at night, Yeah, but I like it so cold that it doesn't get cold enough for how I like it. And so what I miss is the the chili pad more than anything. So that's what I want to do is get that up there at the Truckee house for that for the, that, that like, makes sense there for, for sure. The, for summertime. Yes. For at least the summertime to so I could cool off that side because that was I could not wait tonight. I mean last night I got home, right? So and that was like the first thing, making it sure my chili was up and running. Oh yeah. Night yeah the contrast. Day. 
Yeah, huge difference. It makes a huge difference in how Well, especially it. when it's, you know, 80 plus degrees outside and at a place like where we're at, Truckee, where you couldn't even cool it down. You can't cool it down other than opening the windows and slow. So by about three in the morning, it hits the temperature I like. But from, you know, laying in bed from 10 to three, I'm like tossing and turning. Mm-hmm. And that with the chili pad, I have a time to where I hit that thing and it's already ice cold when I get Let's do that. Let's put them up yeah. there. Yeah, I think we should. Hey, real quick, check this out. Do you eat a diet that's low in heavily processed foods? Or do you have a diet that's low in carbohydrates? Or do you sweat a lot because you like to work out frequently? You probably need more electrolytes in your uh, diet, mostly sodium. Well, check this out. There's a company called LMNT. They make an electrolyte powder you put in your water with the appropriate levels of sodium. Here's what I noticed when I started using it. Better pumps, I was stronger, better recovery. No artificial sweeteners, by the way. They taste really good, uh, and they're very inexpensive. It's got the electrolytes your body actually needs, and it's got the appropriate levels of sodium. Other electrolyte powders are too low in sodium to really make that big of a difference. Not LMNT. And right now, if you go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump, you can get a free sample pack with any order. So that's eight single-serving packets uh, for free. With any LMNT order, and that's only for Mind Pump listeners. Again, it's drinklmnt.com forward slash Mind Pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Lance R. Meyer. What is the difference in hypertrophy between the dumbbell overhead press versus barbell? If the difference is stability, is there more benefit in using dumbbells in most press movements? Okay, so the obvious answer is going to be this. Your best bet is to do both right? Uh, and, and to cycle between the two of them. But what's fun about questions like this is people always want to know either or. Yeah. Like which one is better as if you have to just pick one or the other. Um, it, it, that one's hard for me to say because the barbell, the you can definitely load it more and you can really get more power output and strength. <laughs> but when it comes to balance and stability, obviously the dumbbells are going to be- Well, and then better. also the the- you can move the dumbbells in the most optimal joint pathway. Your, your hand's not stuck. Yeah. Yep. So it's uh, it's like J- Justin always makes a case why he loves kettlebells for kettlebell pressing because the the natural kind of spiral motion that mm-hmm. you that you press with when you do that is feels the most natural, and so dumbbells will be the most comfortable, and you'll probably have the better, safer technique. Like I w- and and if I'm training a, a new client, I would always start with a dumbbell press before yeah. a barbell press. Yeah. Um, because one, I want to get some joints to. I want to train their joint stability in there before I put it. You know, load it a mm-hmm. lot. So I would start them with dumbbells and then move there. Now, for someone who's an advanced lifter, you'd be a fool not to use both. Mm-hmm. They both have their advantages and they both are important. And then and it, it, I know the person starts this or prefaces it with hypertrophy. And they, like you said, they want an answer, but of course, well, then the answer is if it's for hypertrophy and we're specifically that, I, my question, the follow up as a trainer, I would say to you is, which one do you do more of? And then, do the and then you do the opposite. Mm-hmm. If it's from building muscle, and that is like the old, and you're an advanced lifter, so you've already got good joint stability, you've already done dumbbells before, you've already done barbells before, I would ask which one falls in your routine most of the time. I'd say do the other one now for a while. Mm. This doesn't answer the question, but I'm just noticing a trend, and I'm sure it's just a divisive sort of marketing ploy for, but the, a lot of these hypertrophy nerds trying to devalue a lot of strength lifts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's really annoying. And, uh, and, and here's the thing. So I, I saw one recently too, about like seeing how it's so stupid to do like uh, any kind of sled drives or sled work for hypertrophy. And it's, you know, just because it doesn't hit any eccentric uh, part of, of the muscle contraction. And it's like, yeah, no shit, but it still has a lot of value. Like it, yeah. it, it, everything doesn't have to be super hypertrophy based. Like it all, it all fills into the same bucket. And if you're not doing something, you're going to buy me stimulated in, in a new Can way, I, which creates growth. Listen, if all you did was push the sled to build your legs, then you'd be dumb. Yeah. Then you would be, and you would, and you neglected barbell back squats and you neglected front squats and lunges and step ups. But to not use the sled and to complement that, I think that's silly. You know, what's funny about that is the fact that it doesn't have. So, this is what good coaches and trainers know the fact that the sled doesn't have eccentric lowering. So, for people who don't know this, eccentric portion of a rep is the lowering part. So, if I do a curl, concentric is coming up and then lowering the weight is eccentric and I'm lowering it with resistance. Obviously, with the sled, you're only pushing forward. There's no eccentric load. And studies show that the eccentric part contributes the most to muscle building. But here's the this is the trick now. Here's the key. 
good coaches and trainers don't look at a sled and say, oh, it doesn't eccentrically load. That's a detriment. They say that's a feature and a benefit. Now, why? Yes, eccentric can, tends to build a lot of muscle, but eccentric also causes the most damage. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I can add the sled and add volume to routine yeah. while minimally- And reduce risk substantially. Yeah, while minimally adding the, the, the fact that this person needs to recover a bunch more. So I want to add volume, but I want to be careful and not add too much intensity, and I don't yeah. want the person to overtrain. For example, you could push the sled almost every day and probably not, I mean, depending on the person's fitness level, not overtrain. Mm -hmm. And so that's a feature with the sled, not not a not a detriment. Now back to the dumbbell barbell thing. Look, I'll say this. Yeah. I think if we're talking pure hypertrophy, I would say I would say dumbbells probably. Again, the best hypertrophy though would be a combination uh, of the two. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key here is is to utilize all these things and strength. It's strongly related to muscle size. It's yeah. so stupid to say it isn't. It is very, it's so closely related, especially in the first few years of training. Like the first few years of training, try building muscle without getting stronger. Good luck. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The way you build muscle, especially in the first couple of years of training, is by getting stronger. Yeah. Now, eventually you hit certain limits and you can't keep getting stronger forever. And then, you know, you could play with some different stuff. But strength and muscle are both, I mean, what's- They what, both hold a lot of value. They do. This and is so, a silly question to me. So it's dumb to say that. But yeah, barbell versus dumbbell. But that's why it's happening. You're right, Justin. Yes. You pointed out something that is really popular right now. And it is the, it is this hypertrophy crowd that wants to say, oh, that's so stupid to use that tool. Or, you know, they want to pick apart somebody who's who's advocating for a tool like a sled and be like, that's so dumb. It's like the same crowd that says that deadlifting is such a stupid exercise for your back because of, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a glute dominant exercise. Why would you call it a back exercise? It's just like, it's so silly. It's again, it, it's half of the motivation for starting this podcast was to have conversations around these type of nuances yeah. because this, this the fitness space loves to you know put everybody in these boxes and getting camps and my way is better than your way. And the truth is like, if you have access to barbells and dumbbells and you want to build a sculpted badass physique, don't you dare neglect one or the other. No, and Utilize I'll, both. Here's yeah. something fun you could do if you've been working out for a long time. Just do dumbbell overhead presses uh, or, or dumbbell shoulder exercises for two months or just do barbell exercises for two months, alternate that way. And then just notice the difference. Well, that, and that's where my advice comes from. Like my quick advice of a kid, cause that's, this has been, I've ha had these questions asked me my whole career yes. where someone walks up to me, interrupts my workout, asks a very specific question like this. And the best quick answer I could give them without assessing them and training them for a long time would be like, what have you been doing? Yeah. You want to build more muscle on your shoulders? What have you been doing? Do you do more dumbbells? Or do you do more barbells? Oh, you do almost always barbells? Go do dumbbells. Yeah, do that's the other a, one. Yeah. And, or vice versa. Right. So that's, that's really the, the short answer. Next question is from Robin Lyons. Can you recommend a good protein powder that doesn't contain whey? Yeah, you know why this is a good question? Because whey protein, first of all, I, I want to talk about the benefits of whey protein. Whey pro and you know what's funny, by the way, before the fitness industry figured this out, whey was the part of away. milk that they threw away. Yeah. You you couldn't sell whey. You know this, you worked in a dairy. Mm -hmm. You would toss it, yeah. uh, toss it, right? But they figured that whey is very high in uh, essential amino acids, very high in branched amino acids. It's for people who can tolerate it, very bioavailable. It's got immune boosting properties, one of the best muscle building proteins that exists. And simultaneously, it mixes very easily in liquid. So it's like the perfect protein powder. Like if you've ever tried whey and other, and then you've tried like other protein powders, you know that whey does tends to mix yeah. very well and tastes very good. It's not as grainy and like yeah, it, it blends really nice. Blends very creamy. well. So it's it's a it's the best of all the proteins you can get. Protein powders whey is definitely the best one. But if you're like me, I I don't I can't tolerate any dairy, so I can't have whey. I can't have casein. I can't have any even if it's lactose free. It bothers my gut, so I have to go with other options. What are some of those? better other options. Well, if you stick to animal sources of protein, which tend to be better if you're going to go gram per gram, you could buy egg protein powders. Egg protein powders, however, they tend to, because it's high in, I think, sulfur. Sulfur, yeah. It tends to cause uh, pretty bad farts. Yes, yeah, A lot of people will say that. Uh, and I've you know, i noticed that myself and I've had clients notice that. But if it doesn't, egg is really good. You could do uh, collagen. Collagen's got some benefits, but it's not the best muscle building protein gram for, per gram, but it's got some other health benefits. And then you can go vegan. Now with vegan protein, what you'll see is what you don't, what you want to stay away from are single sources of vegan protein, like just soy or just pea, because vegan sources of protein, 
they you're better off with the combination. It gives you a more balanced amino acid profile. Um, so the one that I use, obviously, we, we've been working with Organifi for a long time. Their plant protein is the best one that I've ever used. And I've, I've used plant proteins now for 15 years. And I've gone, you know, brown rice protein. I've gone soy protein. I've gone pea protein. Organifi's is this blend of different <coughs> vegan sources. And it's very easy to digest. And I, I feel really good on it. So that's the one that I would recommend. Now, since you recommended Organifi, it's a, I think it's a good opportunity also to talk about... Um, buying protein powder based off of price because I think oh, yeah. that's probably been the number one thing that I've had to discuss with clients mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about protein powders because even even well before I, we worked with Organifi or, or Organifi even existed, I was a trainer and I'd recommend a protein powder. I'd always recommend a couple brands that I really liked and my clients would always come back. It was the constant battle. Like, oh, did you get a protein powder? I'm like, oh yeah, no, I found this one. You know, it was they will always find the cheaper one mm -hmm. because they're always trying to save money. And they'd be like, oh, this one, the one you recommended was like 60, 70 bucks. I found this one yeah. for 35 for whatever. And it's like you the the supplement industry is not regulated. So going for the cheapest uh supplement product is most often not the best strategy. So you have to explain like what makes a good quality protein powder. And why you're spending more money? Because I know when people see Organifi, Organifi is on that upper tier of price point for what yeah. they what they have. Well, first off, protein powders are very low margin supplements. A lot of people don't know this, but supplement companies don't make huge profits off protein powders because it's so competitive. That's right, you're talking about 10, 15 percent. So yes, that's, that's such a good point. That's all supplements. Protein powders are smaller. Because the way, you know where they make their margins, pre-workouts and other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the protein powders are low because it's such a competitive market. In fact, supplement companies often will be okay with like a 1% or 2% margin, knowing that they'll bring people in to buy their other products. So why am I saying this? Because it's there's not a lot of room to cut price unless you cut quality. Mm -hmm. This is where you see the difference. What do, they, what do I mean by quality? Well, first off, supplement companies, big ones, have been caught and busted Amino for doing spiking. things like amino acid spiking. Mm -hmm. So if a company says it's 30 grams of protein per scoop and a company comes in to test that, the way they test that is they don't test all the amino acids. They'll test one. Okay, 30 grams of protein of whey should have this much leucine in it. So they'll test the leucine and then they'll, they'll confirm, oh, it's got 30 grams of protein. What these shady supplement companies were doing, and there were a few that got busted, literally, legally, is they would just spike it with leucine to make it cheaper. So then when you test it, oh, 30 grams of protein. In reality, it was like 15 grams of protein per scoop. So you're paying you know, less, but you're getting way less protein. Not getting right. 30 grams, you're getting 15 grams. Then there was a whole issue that happened, I think four or five years ago, where vegan uh, protein mm. powders were getting tested and found to ha have dangerous levels of high of heavy metals, which is especially alarming if like you can't have whey right, and your options are limited. But now, like a lot of these vegan proteins that are out there, have this toxic uh, amount of metal that uh, you're, you're going to be consuming. Yeah, you with take that. Like, you take it every day. Your body doesn't get rid of heavy <laughs> metals very well. Yeah, and that can cause some serious problems. And and it was the organic ones. Why? Because organic pesticides sometimes can cause uh, high levels of heavy metals. The good companies were testing for all of this mm -hmm. and were making sure that it wasn't in there. Uh, the, the cheaper ones didn't pay for that kind of stuff. So you really get what you pay for when it comes to protein powders. Is it, so is it still examine.com is like one of the better uh, yeah. places you can kind of check a lot of these companies and their track record? I don't think you could check companies, but they'll break down. Something. What you want to look for with a company are uh, third party tests. Like how uh -huh. many third party companies go in? Test them. Can you get the report? Like you could call Organifi and ask for mm -hmm. third party testing and they'll send them to you. So it's very, very good uh, quality. And again, remember, you're, you're consuming, most people who take protein powders take them almost every day. So something you take that often, you don't, you want it to be really good quality. You don't want it to be bad quality because it's something you're putting your, well, in if your it's, mouth. Well, if it's significantly cheaper, you should right away, that should be a red flag because of what you said. It's 10 to 15% margins. That is so small. And yeah, that's because. Yeah. All of these companies are getting their the 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 main stuff like the actual protein powder yeah. or the whatever they're fortifying it with from all the same places. So if you're actually getting what it says in there, it costs about the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. So their prices have to be somewhat competitive. So if someone is twenty thirty dollars cheaper a jug than this other company, then something's probably going on. They're either spiking some bullshit or they're exaggerating because it doesn't have to be FDA approved. So they're not regulated. So you have to look for and they're or they were not paying for third party testing. 
testing, which costs companies money to do that also. Look, supplements are, I, I am a big advocate for keeping uh, supplements unregulated because I think if they're regulated, it, it would destroy the whole market for them. We would have way less variety and all that stuff. But that also places more responsibility on the consumer. And I tell you what, you can look them up. Look at all of the uh, independent research that's gone into some of these companies. Like there, there was one study where they went and tested 12 brands. I think it was 12 from Target. So I went and tested 12 of them. I think one of them had what they said they had in it. The rest were all garbage. So you're looking at 90% yeah. of them were complete garbage. Some of them had stuff in there that they couldn't even identify. <laughs> then there's supplement companies that got in big trouble because they sold supplements with pharmaceuticals in them. Yeah. Oh, so, and this has happened to athletes where they get popped for certain uh, types of illegal substances, but were because they were um, mixing it all within the same place, like it was getting trace remnants of those within, you know, the proteins, the, the uh, pre-workouts, yeah. and they would get like <laughs> illegal stimulants in there and, and yep. uh, other things. So it's like, yeah, you just really got to be conscious of, of, how the company operates and how totally. clearly they test. Next question is from randomly Randy. How much is too much for trigger or focus sessions? Oh, okay. Well, first to find the difference between the two. Yeah. So, okay. So trigger sessions are found in our program maps, anabolic focus sessions are found in our program maps, aesthetic. So for people who don't have those programs, what a trigger session is, is on the days off. So you're not going to the gym today. It's a day off. Essentially, a trigger session would be a five to eight minute light band workout where you could focus on target body parts or do one, you know, four or five exercises, different body parts. And the goal is to get a little bit of a pump and to kind of feel the muscles working a little bit. And you do those maybe two or three times a day on your off day. So five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes at night, and you get this little pump. And what it does is it, it, it the, the theory is it, it maintains the, the muscle building signal that you sent with your hard workouts. And the evidence, which is anecdotal, we don't have studies on this yet, but actually there are studies that support it, but not specifically for trigger sessions. But what, it, what people are saying is it does, it builds more muscle, I recover faster, and it's something that's very valuable. So that's a trigger session. Focus session is a little more intense. It's focused on a body part that's a lagging body part, and it's all it's also on a quote unquote off day. So if today's an off day and I have a lat, my calves are weak or my glutes are weak, I go to the gym and I typically pick two or three isolation exercises or machines, and I work that muscle. And the intensity is higher with that than a trigger session, but it's not like your normal high intensity workout. So the question is, how much is too much? Well, if your normal workout is a 10 in terms of intensity, a trigger session is like a three, okay? A focus session would be like a six, probably like a six or seven. So just to give you an idea of how intense they should feel, if you do trigger sessions and it's a seven or eight and you're doing them several times a day on your off day, you're going to overtrain. And if you do a focus session at a 10, like you do normal workouts, you're going to overtrain. So it's very important to maintain that kind of lower intensity with them to make them, you know, really work. To add to that, I would say that I, I would say trigger sessions and focus sessions are very different. Yeah. Um, trigger sessions, I think of them more purely as a way to speed up recovery. Yeah, active um, recovery. That's all I'm doing. It's like it, I, I, I almost put it in the category of me stretching. Like it's on that level of intensity. I am not. It's not intense at all. I'm not even breaking a sweat. Yeah. It's literally just pumping some blood into the muscle with some rubber bands. Um, I never use dumbbells. I sometimes use body weight, but even rarely body weight because body mm -hmm. weight can be even uh, a, a more than enough. So it's a real, real light pump. And uh, I think of that. Like, a focus session is, is a workout in the gym, but we're just picking exercises that are isolation, like cable machines, right? Tricep pushdowns, you know, cable curls, mm -hmm. you know, laterals, like these very uh, light type of movements. But I'm, I'm getting after it. But it's like what other people call finishers. Oh, right? very good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that, like a bunch of finisher exercises on, on a day. So like but, what would a chest focus session look like, for example? Like a cable fly would be yeah. that. Yeah, cable fly would be a, a great uh, focus day. So, and a cable fly can be pretty intense. So that's why I don't like using like intense because you can get after it, but it's not going to, it's not going to do as much damage as a barbell bench press. Right. 
So, but it's still a workout. I mean, I'm, I'm when I'm doing focus sessions, I will probably get a little bit of a sweat still. I'm definitely going to get a massive pump. I'm going to feel burning in the muscles. Like it's a workout. Um, You're but picking it's, less intense exercises. That's right. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing any heavy barbell lifting. I'm not doing any compound lifts. We're doing all the ice, the machines and the cables, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm still getting after it, but I'm doing machines, cables, isolation type movements. Uh, it is a workout. We're trigger sessions. Uh, that where people mess up, I think, are more on trigger sessions. I think people over apply intensity on our trigger sessions Agreed. and think they're yeah. you're, you're supposed to do these these other like it's a workout. It's not where mm -hmm. yeah. focus sessions is more like that. I would yeah, say. and I'll say this: like uh, doing those properly, either trigger sessions or focus sessions, you will notice within a week or two. Uh, they do add value to your workout. They really do. They don't sound like it when you hear oh low intensity, like I'll just skip it or whatever. Try it out. Be consistent for a week or two. You'll notice a difference within that week or two because they do make that that big of a difference. Next question is from Cole Rowe. Is there a superior for, form of cardio? For example, would you, it be better to run, do hit, or just go ham on an assault bike? I, I can't answer those questions. I don't know what you're after. Like, yeah. There are superior forms of cardio well, depending on the thing. goals. Again, specificity. Yeah. yeah. Like what, what what are you trying to accomplish? What type of endurance are you trying to achieve? Like, is this going towards a, a sport? Is this just going towards your lifestyle and like something that you enjoy? Or, or body composition. Or body composition. Yeah. Though those are all different goals yeah, that you have to I, consider. I, I, I'll say this. Uh obviously it depends on the person's goals and all that stuff. But I'm talking if I'm talking about overall general activity health, uh, you know, uh, also the ability to maintain consistency. So it's got to be somewhat convenient. So like all those in all together, walking yeah. would be the one that I, that's the one I recommended the most to most people. Now, can, now remember I trained everyday average people for the most part. Yeah. So, for general health, you're right. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, this, it, this is a one, I mean, here's it. it Anytime somebody asks what's the best exercise for this or what's the best mode of cardio yep. for, it's like the answer should, as a good trainer should always say it depends because it totally depends on what you've been currently doing and what your your specific goal is because all the th examples this person gives, the the hit, the going ham on the assault, the assault or running, like all those things you could use for different different goals yeah. based off of what you what you're trying to call or based off of what you are currently doing. Yep. So you may have uh, you may have a goal and I may say like let's say it's body composition um, and, but you have already been doing hit for the last three weeks and you go, I want to know what the best one is. And maybe I was going to say hit, but then I found out you've been doing hit for the last three weeks that no longer is for body composition because your body's adapted yeah. to that already. Or so, maybe you, your, your, your body's already on, on the brink of overtraining and you're stressed and I'm not going to have you do hit because of that. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you're going to do some light walking because you need something that's more recuperative. It's like going to the doctor and without saying anything else, but Hey doc, what's the best medicine for me? Yeah. Could you imagine a doctor just throwing medicine at you? <laughs> like, right. Here you go. Try this. You know, this will work for you. Like, how do you know? Right. Yeah. You have to know what you're, if, if it's all based off those things, the, the superior form for you is what's going to be the superior form for you and maybe not somebody else. I do find it helpful if, if people, um, well, I guess like what we like to talk about and people think that we're against cardio for some reason, just because we, it's because it's always addressing body fat composition yeah. and that, that that's the go-to button for a lot of people to just all of a sudden now I'm just going to increase uh, cardiovascular work uh, to, to be able to, you know, affect my composition. But one thing that uh, I think people always overlook neat and they always overlook uh, the amount of steps per day and the, the, the overall activity, yeah. what matters is your overall activity at the end of the day. Yeah. And so if, if, especially if, if it's a, a composition goal, uh, if you're not considering that you're not tracking that, like you're doing yourself uh, a disadvantage. Yeah. I, I got in my, uh, my best, my best health overall. What I mean by that is just feeling good, good quality of life. <clears throat> comes from when I add about three walks a day, Eat breakfast, like morning, afternoon, and evening for about 15, 20 minutes each time. I just feel the best doing that. Now it's not the best form of cardio for me for like athletic performance. Um, but when it comes to just general, like I feel good, that one tends to work the best. And that's usually what I would recommend to most people. Cause most people that I would train, were not interested in, you know, high intensity, athletic performance. They were interested in fat loss, of course, but that was like diet and strength training.
but they were just, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to feel good. Well, that's so also because walk. what you're doing is you're also calculating or factoring in uh, consistency. It, it, totally, hundred percent. So you're not you're not just thinking about what's the best mode that's going to burn the most calories. What's or the get this easiest the to stay consistent? Yeah, and what's going to get them to their goal the fastest? You're also thinking longevity of like, okay, if I tell this client, you know, who never does hit cardio, that hey do hit every day, you know, for the next three weeks and we're going to get in the best shape. Like, okay, well, sure. Maybe I help her or him get in better shape between now and then. But like long-term, what happens with that? Does that person keep it up? Versus could I convince this, this client that getting up, you know, a half hour earlier every day before work and taking a nice half hour walk and then ending their day every day with another half hour walk, you know, at the end of the night with their spouse or something like that. And then that becomes a lifelong thing that they mm -hmm. do forever. I'm doing such, uh, I'm doing such a better service to that person for body composition, for overall health, for everything by, by convincing them to do that mode, even though in a Again, this is why I always get on the whole, like when people love to tout studies, a six-week study that you're going to lose. A six-week study of comparing someone doing hit every day to somebody who gets, you get them to walk. Well, the, the hit one's going to show greater fat loss or better muscle performance, or you're going to see better, but you can't just stop there. You have to think about this uh, over in a period of- Your life rest, yeah. is longer than six weeks. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to <laughs> think about it this way, right? So like, you got to think beyond six weeks, this is forever. What's going to work? I want what's going to work for me long term, not what's going to, unless I have a specific goal. Like if I'm going to go, you know, compete in something 12 weeks from now, well, yeah, now it's a 12 week time frame. Otherwise, the time frame is, is forever. And, you know, I hope to live a very long time. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides, a bunch of them that you can download and learn from. And it's our way of giving back to our audience. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit, and that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go and do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.